wonder, have you ever felt uh, this way? I wish I could be really real all the time. I wish I could be really real all the time. Maybe after some conversation with a friend, you've got back to your room and you've thought, well, why did I say that? Not that it was something that just hurt them or it was some big talk that was just big talk. It wasn't really you at all. And you've wished, oh, I wish I could be honest all the time. I wish I just wasn't such a miserable hypocrite. And it just makes you feel sick, doesn't it? It just makes you feel you're, oh, putting on a, a show for people. Maybe putting on a religious show for the people in the Christian group that you are with and maybe putting on a different show for the people that you work with and putting on another show for the people that you spend your leisure time with. You just get so fed up with it that you just at times almost feel like crying and wish, I wish I could be real. I wish I could be a real person all the time. I wish I could be just what I am all the time. Instead of playing all these roles and pretending to be all these people for all kinds of reasons. And loved ones, I don't know that there's one of us here this morning, who has not felt like that sometime, and maybe still feel like that a thousand times. And of course, we're all encouraged to think that everybody does that, and that's the way life is. And we see the Watergate situation, or we see the Rockefeller gift. And we kind of use that to reinforce ourselves that there, everybody's like that. All the public figures are like that. And probably all the other people that I know are like that. And yet somehow, deep down, we still feel that it can be different from that, don't we? Somehow, deep down, we feel, yeah, but whatever everybody else does, I feel it would be a great relief to me personally. If I could just be me, and if I didn't have to keep putting on a show for people. Really, it it is putting on a show, isn't it? I mean, you you find yourself drawn out to do it every time. Maybe more especially with authority figures. But really, you find yourself doing it all the time. You find yourself wanting to say what they would want you to say, or, on the other hand, wanting to say what they wouldn't want you to say. But either way, you're not being yourself. You're not being real. And somehow, deep down, you feel that surely it's possible to have a world with people in it who are themselves. Surely it's possible for us to act with one another in such a way that we don't all have to go home into our little rooms and put our head in our hands and be sorry for what bluffers we are and what hypocrites we are and what schizophrenics we are. Paul used a a really lurid phrase to describe that experience. In the first century, Certain murderers were condemned to just what is almost the most repulsive punishment any of us here can probably imagine. The body of the victim that they had murdered was tied around them and they were forced 
to walk over the next 12, 24, 36, 48 months with the dead body of their victim hanging around them. And the stench of that in their nostrils, breathing it in over those two or three or four years. And that was often called the body of death. And that's what Paul says he feels this hypocrisy is like that he experiences in his own life. And he says, I'm wretched. Who can deliver me from this body of death that hangs around me? You must admit, loved ones, it, it does often seem like just a body of death. You just can't get clear of it. I mean, you want to say, that's not me that was doing all that boasting. That's not me that was talking big. That's not me that pretended that I knew more about science or more about math or more about automobiles or more about sewing or more about something else than I really do. That's not me. It's not me. And yet, it is you. And it seems to be a body of death that just clings around you day after day after day. And you wonder, who on earth? going to deliver me from that. And that's what this verse is. You know, the, the verse just runs, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You know how it works. You feel your friend is trying to get one over on you. Or somebody in work is trying to get one over on you. You feel in some way they're trying to usurp your position. And you find that old, squalid, petty resentment rising up inside you. And you feel it towards them. And outside you're trying to carry on, yeah, would you type this for me, John? Or would you do this? And you're trying to carry on as if you feel nothing but friendship towards them. But inside you feel this petty, squalid resentment against them. And you go back home and you know it's wrong. And you say, that, that's wrong, that's wrong. And there, even if they are trying to get one over on me, even if they're trying to usurp my position, it's wrong for me to feel that. And you go back and you resolve, I'm not going to let that destroy our relationship. I'm going to overcome that. I'm not going to feel that. I'm going to love them. I don't care if they're putting a knife in my back. I'm going to love them. And you go back and you see their face, and their face prompts all those feelings. And they rise up inside you. And you begin to misinterpret their words and they're saying something utterly innocent. And you're saying, yeah, yeah, you see, they're trying to do it. They're trying to take the feet from under me. That's it. And then you read a psychology book on paranoia and you wonder, ah, oh, am I going? And you do your best to overcome it and say, this is stupid, this is stupid, this isn't it, this isn't it. And yet the thing inside you rises and wriggles and moves and just destroys your relationship. And you know fine well that you're just being hypocritical. They're not meeting you as you really are. You join the sensitivity group. It's the same in the sensitivity group. You join all kinds of groups to try to be real with people. But you have to confess that deep down inside you, there are all kinds of feelings that you do not express to them. Indeed, that you're ashamed to express because you know they shouldn't exist. And of course, most of us, I'm afraid in our churches we're taught to answer that question a certain way. Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? We were taught to answer the grave. That's what will deliver us from this body of death. Nobody else can. When we die, when we go into the grave and we get to heaven, then we'll be delivered from this hypocrisy. That's it. Until then, all we can do is fight against evil as much as we can and try to be as good as we can. But that fight is on our hands for the rest of our lives. And I think most of us have been encouraged to feel that. You know. That you just cannot get rid of that double-mindedness. You can't get rid of that hypocrisy. You can never come to a place where you're transparent. And it's almost as if the more hopeless we become in the idea that we'll ever be transparent, the more we talk in our popular psychology books about transparency. And we all say, oh yeah, yeah, I want to be a transparent person. 
But deep down, we feel, oh, I'm never going to be a transparent person. And we've been encouraged to believe that that you can't do anything about. That's the fight of faith. That's what we're all committed to. We're all committed to trying to increase the good in us and trying to decrease the bad until we die. Now, Dylan, what I have to push you to see is that that is not the answer that God himself gives. I'm afraid many of us have committed ourselves unnecessarily to a defeated life of schizophrenic behavior, to a defeated life of hypocrisy, to a defeated life of trying to keep covered what's inside, hoping that nobody will be able to hypnotize us, otherwise they'll see what we're really like. We've committed ourselves to that kind of fear, because it is a fear, isn't it? You feel that's part of what makes us insecure. We wonder, oh, if anybody sees us as we really are, oh, they'd never have anything to do with us. And that's what causes all the inferiority, isn't it? We feel, oh, yeah, they put up with us. Brother puts up with us, or our father puts up with us, or our teacher, because they don't really know us as we are. And so we quake inside that somebody might sometimes see us as we really are. We've committed ourselves to that kind of eternal fear that anybody will ever see what's inside. Because we feel that's the last verse of chapter 7. And it isn't. That is not the last verse of chapter 7. And yet numbers of you have said to me in the past, No, Pastor, isn't it true? I mean, all right, you can have victory. But, but let's face it, even Paul says, Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Loved ones, the chapter does not end there. Now, when you look at it so that you make sure, because... Who knows what I'm saying to you? Maybe it's an Irish Bible. It's Romans 7, it's page 982. 982. And the question runs like this. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? That's verse 24. And verse 25 is, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, loved ones, that's the first half of the last verse in the chapter. You know, time is moving this morning, and probably all I can share with you is that that is not the end of the chapter. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? That is not the kind of life that we're condemned to. The end of the chapter is, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I think some of you may say, oh yeah, Pastor, but we all know what that is. You know, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means uh, we try and try to be transparent. We try and try to be honest and we fail and we keep on being dishonest and we keep on being filled with anger and irritability and resentment and we keep on being like that. But because God has worked out his wrath on Jesus instead of us, he doesn't treat us as the guilty ones. That's why we say, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. No, loved ones. The victory and what God means when he prompted Paul to say that is shown clearly if you look back at Romans chapter 6. Because Paul talks in terms not of being delivered from condemnation or from guilt, but being delivered from something deeper than that. And verse 7 of Romans 6. He who has died is freed from sin. So we're freed from sin. Not freed from guilt or condemnation, but freed from sin. If you look then down at verse 14. For sin will have no more dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Paul is talking about deliverance from those inside things that destroy our lives. And isn't that what we need? You know, we writhe under the resentment that boils inside us, and we writhe under our bad temper and our irritability and our sarcastic feelings, and we come and ask, you know, can you, can you do something about us? And so often we've heard the answer, well, you know, God has forgiven you. And really we all feel like saying, well, we know he's forgiven us, 
but when we need his deliverance. These things are still spoiling our lives. They're still spoiling the lives of our friends. What we need is deliverance. We don't need indulgence or more forgiveness. We want deliverance from these things. And loved ones, that's what Paul talks about. He says, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? And brothers and sisters, it is possible to be delivered from those things. It is possible to become a transparent person. It is possible to be delivered from the things inside that destroy our lives. It really is. And it's possible in Jesus. It's through his death. Uh, the, the, the time is so gone that it just isn't fair to uh, sub subject you to the, the, the whole message. So I'll finish here at this point. It is in Jesus that this takes place. It is in his death. There is an experience of his death that you can have that enables God to deliver you from all that hypocrisy. There is a sense in which you can identify yourself with Jesus in his death that enables God, your creator, to deliver you from resentment and self-pity and from that double life. It is possible, loved ones. And a number of us have entered into it, and we know it's possible. There are a number of us here who were at the end of our tether. And we felt just like Paul. And we said, wretched man, wretched woman that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? It's impossible. And we tried to deliver ourselves. And we tried it by discipline and by more prayer and by more self-denial. And it was impossible. The more we tried, the worse we got. It was like sinking sand. It was like quicksand. We struggled to get out, and the more we struggled, the deeper we went into it. And there are many of us here in the body who did that for years. I did it for, seven, I did it for 13 years. And there are many of us here who have done it for just as long. And we thought there was no hope. There was no hope. And then God lit up for us what he did in Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit, we were delivered from us. And that's really about all there's time to say. Uh, it's like saying to you, listen to the next installment if you're here for the first time today. I think I have to say that because yeah, I love you enough to want you back to the dorms for lunch. And uh, I think we, we need to be faithful to one another. Do you want do you see that the end of the chapter is not who shall deliver me from this body of death? The best that Christianity can do for you is not forgiveness. The best that God has done in Jesus is not to enable you to get to heaven. There is a greater than that. It is possible to become a transparent person. It is possible through a mighty work of God in your heart to become what you appear to be on the outside. I mean, have you ever thought what that would be like? I remember uh, someone said to me, um, could you have your heart, and they didn't mean the blood pump, they meant the inside of me, my innermost feelings and thoughts. Could you have the inside of you projected on the man outdoor theatre screen? for everybody to see. Uh, no, no, no problem with that. No, I couldn't, no. Better get another movie, that one. <laughs> and, oh, you know, could you, could you have that? And yet, wouldn't it be beautiful to be able to say that? I mean, think of all the freedom from fear that somebody would find you out. Think of all the freedom that you'd experience. Think of how spontaneous you could be. Because most of us live about a fifteenth of our lives as far as our own abilities are concerned. We're so busy trying to make sure that nobody sees our slip showing. And nobody sees that there's something that isn't quite nice about us. And so we're holding back on all fronts. Many of us who are writers, many of us who play instruments, many of us who sing, many of us who speak, many of us who have gifts of friendship are holding back all the time 
oh, about 75% of our own abilities because we're afraid they'll see the thing inside that nobody knows about. Do you see the spontaneity that would come into your life if you at last had nothing inside to hide? Now, loved ones, it's possible to come to that. It's possible to come to it. Uh, in case there are some who can't come next Sunday, uh, there is a little book that I wrote. It's, n it's not a great book, but it's a little tract, Free to Live. You should read that. Or you should read Andrew Murray's Absolute Surrender. Or you should read Watchman Nee's The Normal Christian Life. And they're all available down in the bookshop downstairs. That's uh, less someone here is going to be traveling and, and won't be back next Sunday. You should read and believe that it's possible. You can get cassettes from the library on this same deliverance and just write here and we'll send you them wherever you are. And those of you who can come back next Sunday, come back next Sunday. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that Romans 7 and 24 is not the end of the road. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we do not have to drag around this body of death for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Father, that it is possible to be delivered into transparency. Thank you, Father, that it's possible for us at last to be what we really are. And it's possible to be so purified and so transformed by our death with Jesus that your Holy Spirit can enable us to be what we are. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we don't need to wait until heaven to be real. Thank you that we can live a life of reality and honesty here on earth. Oh, Father, I know that many brothers and sisters here long for that. And Father, I would trust you that by your Holy Spirit, now that we have grasped the possibility, that you would show us how to come into this, even during this coming week. Even, Father, if all you do is make us more and more fed up with ourselves, more and more tired of ourselves, even if all you do is bring us into continual situations with our roommates, where we become more and more frustrated. Father, we would trust you this coming week to lead us closer into this deliverance. We thank you that's possible, Father. Thank you that we don't need to be people who hide all our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen.